Spray Tips with Tom Wolf is brought to you by Loveland Products and All Clear, the premium spray tank cleaner. Don't let spray tank residue lose you. The results are all clear. Hello there and welcome to Spray Tips with Tom. I'm Tom Wolf. Uh, today we're going to talk about spray coverage. Uh, spray coverage is a, a very important part of spraying. A lot of product labels refer to getting good coverage and ensuring that you do everything you can to get great coverage and applying sufficient water for adequate coverage. But the labels are remarkably silent on, on what good coverage actually is and how you can actually measure it. So we're left with sort of a, I guess, almost a legalistic and really quite useless statement on many of our product labels uh, that leave us hanging. And so with the, the, the quest for coverage begins. How do we go about this quest? Well, I think coverage, first of all, should be defined. What do we really mean by coverage? There's a little bit of confusion there. So I've identified three possible ways people are looking at coverage uh, in different uh, areas. The first one is uh, talking about droplet density. Um, oftentimes, uh, certain products will say, well, you, in order to pr uh, pr uh, you know, protect a plant from an insect pest or a disease or something, you need a certain number of droplets per square inch or droplets per square centimeter. That's a very good and important parameter. It is important for many, for many of those kinds of products. So that's, uh, that's a powerful one. Sometimes we just talk about area covered, you know, how, what proportion of the area is covered and that uh, refers to kind of, I guess, a water sensitive paper situation we'll, we'll show you some in a second. And finally, and ultimately, probably the most important one is the dose. I mean, how much dose is actually on the plant? Uh, what, you know, is, is there enough material there, is enough of the, of the herbicide or insecticide or fungicide to actually elicit the desired biological effect in the plant? Uh, so that, that and all of those things are difficult for the producer, for the applicator to actually measure. And uh, it's, it's even challenging for, for, for the researchers because of sometimes special equipment is required. But there is a very powerful tool. And that powerful tool is uh, something called water sensitive paper. And um, water sensitive paper is a, is a, a yellow paper that when you uh, put a droplet on it, uh, turns uh, a color. And you can see uh, that right here. And you can see the, the purple deposits that are on this yellow paper, and it uh, happens almost immediately. Now, when a droplet lands on this paper, uh, it spreads out to about twice its original diameter, so it has a spread factor of about two. So, if, for example, if you measure a, a diameter of a millimeter, the, the droplet that it produces is probably half a millimeter or 500 microns in diameter. Uh, another couple of things about water sensitive paper is that they tend to get saturated or fully covered uh, at a volumes of about uh, 10 to 15 gallons per acre. Anything above that you can't measure using water sensitive paper because there's just nothing but blue. Um, and uh, finally, um, they do have some collection efficiency issues. So for example, the really small droplets tend not to even land on it. They go around it, uh, sort of like, uh, you know, uh, it's just the aerodynamics of the situation. You have a big target, a small particle, that small particle tends not to impact, it tends to go around, just like a sm you know, smoke in a wind tunnel around a car, for example. Uh, so same kind of problem. So you don't tend to see the little tiny guys. Also, the, the paper is not very, very good at actually uh, eliciting that, that color response. Another uh, way of doing it, so it's a little different, but it's really the same thing, is this thing called chrome coat paper. Now, chrome coat paper is, a, is a, a white paper used in the publishing industry. And uh, the, the droplets form deposits, just like you do in Washington's of paper. Uh, very similar spread factors and so on, but you have to have a dye in the tank to make that work. And certain dyes work better than others, so uh, that's a bit of a, a problem too. And the chrome coat paper isn't that easy to get either, so it's, it's a glossy kind of paper, so it's not that easy. The washes of paper uh, is made by Syngenta. So uh, Syngenta uh, sells it to other resellers like T-Jet, that's the biggest supplier of the paper. Uh, but they're also resold by others. For example, a company called Agritronics sells it as part of their spray performance kit, uh, which is simply relabeled. So it's, it's widely available. It's not cheap. Uh, these little pieces of paper will cost you roughly a dollar each. So they come in packs of 50. It's not cheap, but it's very powerful. Um, it's useful because it gives you a chance to do a bit of a quality assessment. You know, you can compare uh, your deposit to a standardized deposit that had, that's been done by a lab, for example, and we'll show you a picture of that. And then uh, you can say, well, I'm pretty good, or I maybe need to do some changes. Any time that you go to a new situation, a new crop, a new nozzle, a new sprayer, new pressure, 
we want you to uh, put some water sensitive paper on that crop, make a spray pass, and have a look at it before you commit to a whole tank of chemical. Uh, make sure you've got what you need. Uh, make some changes. Maybe there's a pressure change. Maybe there's a water volume change that's necessary. Uh, and, then, and then try that again and, and until you're satisfied. Another really cool way to use the paper is to put it into a canopy. Perhaps you're spreading a fungicide. You need to know, well, is that fungicide getting through that dense canopy? And you can put that with paper clips onto various parts of the plant and then make a pass and have a look. Um, so that's, that's useful. Um, but the, the answer still is elusive. How do you, how do you get good coverage and, uh, and how do you make sure it's good enough? Um, so a lot of experience comes into play there, uh, but there's a few general rules of thumb that we want to talk about. So first of all, getting good coverage is really the combination of two important things, water volume and droplet size. The, the more water you have, the better the coverage is going to be for any given droplet size, it makes sense. The smaller the droplet size at the same water volume, the better the coverage is going to be, also makes sense. So when we change both of those things together, we always have to kind of make sure that we're not moving you know, into the wrong direction, for example, big droplets, low water volume, uh, big problem, right? So we always have to make those kinds of adjustments. If you, should, if you, lose a, you want to use a lower water volume, you will have to use a finer spray. Okay, that's part of that package. Um, the, the best way to get into a dense canopy is often just to, to do two important things. One of them is to add that water that I mentioned. More water gets deeper into the canopy. And the second important thing is to slow down. When you slow down, your, your nozzle is more able to push the spray into the canopy. Uh, at a fast travel speed, the nozzle cannot push the spray because it's, it's simply trailing behind in a spray plume and deposits entirely by gravity or by wind. But in a, at a slower travel speed, this, the, the force of that nozzle actually does push the spray into the canopy. So those are the two pieces of advice. Uh, so a key is get some water sensitive paper, uh, put it down, do some quality assurance, and if you need more coverage, you can achieve that with more water, finer droplets, I think we know that, but very importantly for dense and mature canopies, more water and slower travel speed are the key elements here. And that's great to talk.